Microsoft stock, MSFT, ticker symbol. This, this is a phenomenal company, and yet it's been punished by the marketplace. It continues to decline day over day, week over week, month over month. Over the past one day alone, down 2.08%. Your five-day returns, down 1.87%. One month, down 1.75%. Six-month returns of negative 22.7%. And year to date, year to date, down 20 0.9%. You see one of the greatest companies in the world, one of the most firmly entrenched, widest, economic, most, most profitable, most financially stable, and yet the market continues to punish it. The market continues to bring the stock down. One year returns on Microsoft are now only 2.94%. You would invest in this company an entire year ago. You would still almost have lost money on the company. That is the reality of this business. It is the reality of this marketplace more broadly pain across not just the speculative equities, not just the doubtful equities that people have been absolutely punishing because of the large degree of growth predication priced in, but also these quality equities. And when you see this in the marketplace, when you see companies like Microsoft, like Google, like Apple declining day over day, there are two trains of thought, two paths you can take to invest in these companies. Number one, you can get fearful, you can get doubtful, you can see the consistent declines in such a high quality company and begin to think, well, can't possibly be touching this, can't possibly be getting on this company and say that Mark is irrational and it's not the right time to invest. Or there is a second path, and what I believe is probably the more advantageous, logical path at this time. You begin to realize that the Mark has been so deeply encapsulated by fear, encapsulated by doubt, fear, anxiety, that there is actually a buying opportunity present. Not only within Microsoft, but across the market more broadly, but in particular to Microsoft, I think the opportunity is more advantageous than most. You again are looking at one of the single highest quality companies in the world. A company with underlying financial stability that is simply exceptional. A cash to debt ratio of 1.71, the ability if they so desired to pay off all the debt obligations, drop off a hat, and still have cash in hand to reinvest and build out their business going forward. What Microsoft is so good at is making opportunistic acquisitions, buying up other companies that synergistically fit into its business model. We've seen that most recently with the Activision acquisition. Still underway, still undergoing regulatory approval, but that's the tactical uh, acumen and tactical vision of this company. With that cash on hand combined with the massive degree of free cash flow constantly accreting to the business, constantly accreting from their, their gaming division, from their office business, from their cloud division, free cash flow constantly flowing into their business, it not only adds financial stability to the company, enhances its ability to endure a recession, which is likely on the horizon, as so many people seem to be speculating, but also enables them to be opportunistic during that recessionary period. Buy up depressed companies, buy up the companies punished by the marketplace. That means additional free cash flow accretion. It means additional profitability, further growth for this company. In terms of financial stability, this is an absolute beast not only by virtue of the cash in hand, but also the cash flow constantly accreting to this company. And that's reflected in the Altman score, an Altman score of 8.64, indicating a tremendous degree of unlike stability and certainty with this business. When it comes to safety, when it comes to longevity, and knowing that your company is going to be around 5, 10, 15 years from now, it doesn't get much better than Microsoft. Microsoft, despite its immense size and maturity, is still exhibiting very, very impressive growth. We need to bear in mind that this is a $2.02 trillion company. And some of the numbers I'm about to show you in terms of underlying profitability for this company at this scale, it simply hasn't been done before. Let me show you. Their current net margins, their current net margin profitability for this company is 37.63%. On a historical basis, these are the best net margins they have ever achieved, and also on an industry basis, simply outstanding. Think about it. Think about a company at this scale, operating at a $2 trillion market cap, and still retaining debt margins of 37.63%. Every dollar of revenue that comes in, 37% of that is pure profit. That, that's the reality of this company. That's the opportunity evident within this business. That's the reality of Microsoft. It has been for a while, and yet, the market continues to punish this equity. The market continues to bring down its stock price. And some investors may run away. I've seen some people exiting their Microsoft position. What I encourage you to do, what I applaud you to do, is investigate the business first. See these phenomenal numbers still being exuded by the company. And then make your decision as to whether it's overvalued, undervalued, whether you should be exiting or entering a position. That, 
That's the time to make that play. But investigate it first. Understand the company first. Understand the profitability, the operating margins, the net margins, all of which are simply outstanding. Again, operating margins at 42.56% historically and on an industry basis, the best they have ever been better than 98% of all other software companies, despite being the largest software company in the world. And gross margins, yes, on an industry basis and historical basis, they're not quite as good as the operating and net margins, but still, at 68.73%, it is nothing to laugh at. So, financial stability is there. Underlying profitability at scale is there. And to compound it all together, there is outstanding managerial competency evident within this business. Returns on equity of 48.21%, indicative not only of the underlying quality within the business, but also the tremendous degree of underlying stability and certainty provided by the people at the helm of this company. Satya Nadella running this company extremely well, allocating capital, evidently, for the long term, not puffing the numbers quarter over quarter, but instead focusing on the long-term vision of this company. If we go back, and we go back to when Satya Nadella initially took over, I believe it was the 4th of February, 2014, and you can see, let's go 7th of February, 2014, so it's three days after he took over. From that point, look at the massive run-up in valuation of this company at its peak, up over 838% during his tenure. That, that's a reflection of a quality CEO. And all the numbers here, all the underlying financial stability metrics, profitability metrics associated with this company tell the same narrative. An extremely high quality business run by an extremely high quality management team. That's what you're buying in Microsoft, yet the market has not reflected it. So, with the continued declines in Microsoft, with the continued pain being felt by this company year to date, and particularly over the past six months, is there a buying opportunity present? Is the company finally undervalued? Is it finally time to initiate a Microsoft position? Well, let me show you. Let's break it down. When it looks at the forward PE ratio and the current PE ratio, you get, you know, not really the most compelling case. A PE ratio of 28.23, forward PE of 25.06, so both indicating that there's a fair degree of growth assumption priced in the stock going forward. Nowhere near growth as high as something like NVIDIA or Amazon, but with Microsoft, still a fair degree of growth priced in. And you may say, well, you know, it doesn't look too undervalued. The PE ratio is still fairly high. But when you look at the tangible growth taking place, when you actually break down the growth transpiring within this company relative to how they're pricing in on a forward PE and PE basis, you get a far more compelling story. Let me show you. A three-year earnings per share growth rate of 55.8%, three-year EBITDA growth rate of 20.8%, three-year free cash flow growth rate of 21.2%, and a three-year revenue growth rate alone of 16%. Massive, consistent growth. In fact, accelerating growth taking place on this company over the past decade. And yet, despite growing earnings per share in excess of 55% every year for the past three years, there's only a 25 forward PE. Think about that. Think about the discrepancy between the forward PE and the growth taking place. Bear in mind that, again, the PE ratio is not the be-all, end-all of investing. The PE ratio doesn't tell us everything we know about a company. All the PE ratio tells us is how much gross predication is priced into the stock going forward. How much do investors, how much do the broader market believe this company can grow and compound going forward over the next decade? So that low PE relative to the high growth taking place, that may actually indicate a degree of undervaluation evident within the business. And when we break it down in detail, when we break down the numbers in more detail, looking over the past decade in terms of tangible growth, the case gets even more compelling. Let me show you. If we break it down, look at this growth rate, a growth rate of 11.6% over the past 10 years, massively accelerating over the past five years to a growth rate of 26.8%. Over the past one year alone, a growth rate of 30.5%. This trend, this trend of acceleration in terms of earnings, revenue, EBITDA, it's not just reserved to earnings. It's also in relation to all these other metrics. Free cash flow accelerating over time, going all the way from an 8% growth rate to a 17% growth rate EBITDA, accelerating from 13% up to 21%. Operating income, the same story. This, this is the reality of this company. And when you think about the secular tailwinds propelling Microsoft forward, the massive prospects for growth going forward over the next decade, that's the reality of this company. That's the massive opportunity present within this business, a potential metaverse play in the pipeline combined with the underlying quality and massive growth prospects of their Azure cloud business. This company has never been better positioned. I believe going forward over the next decade, the dominance of Microsoft can continue. So, 
on the day. After these recent declines, after recent pain felt in the stock in the decline the day of 2.08%, all we need to price in, all we need to price in in terms of tangible growth going forward over the next decade is a growth rate of 16.82%. We price that in, substantially lower than the five-year earnings per share growth rate of 26.8%. So going forward over the next decade, growth rate of 16.82%. In fact, if we lower our discount rate, all we need to price in is a growth rate of 15.43%. So price that in, 15.43%, going forward over the next decade, discount rate of 9%, current earnings per share figure of $9.58 a share. Look at that fair value. Fair value of $265.54. That's the reality. That's the potential present within this company. Even with a fairly conservative growth rate going forward over the next decade, you're still getting fair value for your money. In this doubtful marketplace, in this fear-laden, anxious marketplace, there is nothing better than being able to buy a wonderful company at a fair price. But you may say, given these secular trends around the company, given the potential for growth going forward, that 15% growth rate actually might seem a little low. What if we up it a bit? What if we get more aggressive? What if we think going forward over the next decade, given the secular tailwinds around the company, what about 20% rate of growth? What about 20% going forward over the next decade? Given the secular trends around not only their cloud business, but also their gaming division, also their potential metaverse play, I think 20% growth isn't unreasonable. And if we price that in, 20% growth going forward over the next decade, discount rate of 9% current earnings per share figure of $9.58 a share. Look at that fair value. Fair value of $364.13. A margin of safety of 27.1%. Massive degree of undervaluation evident within this company. When fear is rampant throughout the marketplace as it is right now, this is what you get. You get a chance to buy a wonderful world-class business, what I would argue to be one of, if not the, single highest quality company in the world at a very, very fair price, very, very appealing price right now. So of course, conduct your own research first, look into the business before you make any moves. But if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something more about my current thoughts on Microsoft, relative to the market more broadly, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or a topic you want to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.